more crack at it when I got my first digital uh, synthesizer and I did uh, Vivaldi, um, The Four Seasons. And I, I would say about that piece that, um, you know, it's, it's good. Um, I, the, 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 the digital synthesizer at that time had some limitations and uh, that was partly the reason, but basically the reason it's, it's not as good as I would like it to have been is that Wendy Carlos had already covered it. She'd done what needed to be done. Yeah, wow. And, and we, we exchanged a couple email this week about Wendy Carlos and to be unreachable, uh, but I, I, I want to create my mission to get a hold of her before before it's too late so wherever we'll talk yeah. you know when we stop the recording but you know i i i, I need I the, i the same the same like you right i have re great respect for richard back and and all the other stuff have done and then i need to get a hold here so yeah. if i need to send 20 mails i will send 20 mails <laughs> good I luck mean, I, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, and you know, she, she and I are the only ones of that generation left. Tomita's gone. Yeah, exactly right. For me, uh, Patrick, and I'm comfortable calling you Patrick and not Dr. Thank you. Um, if this is my third online radio station, I'm going to create in actually halfway done with my sort of electronic music. It's going to be electronic a little bit of ambient music, and then the other half will be soundtrack. So I I plan to put an nice email to Vanessa Van from the studio and say, what what can I do to play your music on my radio? Give me a discount, buying the seat from you, sure. or the light or whatever. And and then I need I will be saying the same the same argument to to Wendy and I will say something like that my my radio, first of all, I'm paying everything. I'm paying for all the servers. I own the music. I'm paying rights to the musician. Yeah. I create the software. It's free. My radios are free. 24 hour day, no advertising, no social media, nothing. It's 90% it's of music, and the other 10% is interview with musicians like yourself and many others, right? Yeah. I, I, I don't want to have an ad from Coca Cola. I'm not going to sell you anything. Yeah, I guess it's great music. So that would be my argument. Why you being famous not offer me like See, an you're, you're, in other words, you're one of us. You're another guy that cares more about music than well, money. I, I, I'm, I'm a computer engineer, right? So I, I have my day job, right? Yeah. This is fun for me, right? Yeah. yeah. Because I, I my dad put put a Louis Armstrong record 78 p.m. when I was three days old, my living room, right? Yeah. And and then my son is going to be the same down the road, right? So I of course, I don't want to lose money, but but I want to interview all these people. I need to close the gap, right? So yeah. I, I have interviewed people from Genesis, right? Uh, I want to... Peter Gabriel has not replied. You know, I'm not too big for... You know, I, Peter, Peter Gabriel only replied to BBC, but I, I start with kind of... I wouldn't call second tier, but the third tier. I'm in the second tier, and I want to keep on calling people, you know? Yeah. Eventually, when I... I, I tell I would tell Wendy Carlos I have three radio that are free. We want I want to broadcast your music. I want to show the world how good your music is. Why not do an interview? I will post the interview in the website. People can benefit. I that for the love of the it, music. It, it's going to be a tough one, but good luck with that. Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, a, I'm an immigrant. I'm perseverant. I'm stubborn, good, consistent. Good, good. Keep keep at it. I got I got to do it, man. Yeah. So so then, so then at the time, by the, by the time you know, nineteen eighty, Rainbow Delta. Uh, you you guys make any money out there? Is it, are selling CDs or selling vinyl at the time, right? Where vinyl? Yeah. Well, here's the thing. You know, when I when I started making records, yeah, uh, I did make money because, for one thing, the stu the the record companies would give you a very good advance. And so uh, for, I think for, for um, Beyond the Sun, I think the advance was $35,000, which in 1978 or whatever that was, you know, it was pretty good money. Pretty good money, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then I was also producing 
uh, records at that time. So until I moved over to, to doing soundtracks, that, that we, it, it was a good source of, of income. Now, I, you, you can give up at, unless you're <clears throat> uh, Beyonce. You can just give up trying to make money from from recordings because Spotify pays you, you know, this much money. I mean, it's just ridiculous. The, the royalties on Spotify, I think a thousand plays will give you maybe a six cents. <laughs> you know, Why? well, because they can. And and I think they shouldn't. Yeah. They so, need competition. Hmm? They need competition. They yeah. Need competition. Well, yeah. I don't so far the competition seems to be YouTube and they're just as bad. I mean, YouTube has probably an hour and a half of my music. I have never even received a royalty statement. You know, they, they just don't. Now, if you if you are making enough money or or you're, there's enough plays that it becomes possible to sue them, then you can sue them and then you'll get a royalty statement and they'll pay you. But otherwise, forget it. So when somebody upload your music to YouTube is without your permission is completely legal, right? It's not, it's, it's, it's quasi legal. It, it's completely legal until you object. <clears throat> I had a situation with YouTube about three years ago. Um, must have been you know, four or five years ago. Um, I also had a kind of a little, I wouldn't call it a career, but more serious than a hobby. I did soundtracks for, for uh, visual artists, avant-garde artists. And uh, the guy I worked with the most was an artist by the name of Bruce Conner. Bruce was very successful and Um, you know, his films with my soundtracks would be played at the Museum of Modern Art and that kind of stuff. So <laughs> this young guy liked what we had done. And, you know, just out of naivete, I, there was nothing ill intended. He thought, what I'll do is I'll keep Gleason's music and make a completely new visual statement, but one that is exactly one-to-one -one related to every image in Bruce's film. So what he did was, for example, Bruce's film had, as it did, um, a, uh, a short uh, shot of, of uh, a kind of big, big guy, almost like a giant, uh, pedaling an extremely small tricycle. Then he would get the closest thing he could to that by surfing the internet, and he would replace Bruce's image With, with his own. I mean, why one would <laughs> do that is e even a question. But then pretty soon it's up on the internet. And I mean, I, I, the guy's not making any money from it, but you know, it's a crappy representation of it's associating my music with, with a bad um, film. So I wrote to, um, uh, to YouTube and it took me about a year to get them to take it down. It, it, was, it wasn't that easy to do. I had to show them that I had the, that I had the copyright and so forth and so on. That's very unfair, so, but, but it, let's say if I buy a CD of vinyl, Rainbow Delta, and tonight I upload it to, so you won't make any money. I wouldn't make any money either. So I'm making, yeah. I, Because they're not. Here's where you can make money. Here's, here's Why would I do it then? Why, what's, what, what would be the benefit for me uploading your music? Well, look, at, I, 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 made, I made soundtracks for 30 years in an era where the pay was just really cloudy. It was stupidly good. I mean, yeah. I mean uh, when I did Knots Landing, I was making $18,500 a week. Plus, plus for the first play, my royalties would be performing rights royalties would be another seven thousand. So I'm making over twenty five thousand dollars a week. So I'm cool. You That's know, pretty good money, man. It was good money. I'm cool, and and my wife now is very successful at what she does. So if I never made a cent, we'd still be cool. So right. I'm not concerned about 
about making the money so much as I am concerned about um, what, what is it? I, I guess I guess what I want to do now is perform live. Of course, we're for the time being that's out of the question. But that you can still make money performing live. Hmm. Um, not a lot, not a lot. And when I played Moog Fest, uh, I think they paid me twenty five hundred dollars, which is not a lot of money. When when the last time you did that? When they do that every year, right? Year after year. Yeah, I, as it turned out. I played at the very last Moog Fest in 2019. That was the last one. I wasn't responsible, but it turned out they just chose not to go forward. They were losing too much money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, are, are those recordings still available somewhere? Oh, I, I, that's another thing I did. I did, a, I made a hundred, it was a solo performance. So I'm recording it as I'm performing it. I put out a hundred um, uh, CDs, a limited edition, numbered and signed. They're a hundred dollars each. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's I've sold I think fifty one so far. So, you know, that's something. But the wonderful thing about that is that the fact that people made that commitment made them. Um, emotionally closer to me. And a lot of those persons I correspond with all the time. You know, I, I mean, um, it's interesting because they made the commitment to spend a hundred dollars. I think they like the music better <laughs> and they're more interested in me. And so these, some of these things have turned into friendships, which is great. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. And then, so, so you begin putting this, uh, soundtrack, electronic music, and then studios, and then other producers, movie people, you know, advertising company call you, hey, we want, can you try this? Can, I need 30, 30 second music for Coca-Cola advertising or right. Boeing or whatever. Yeah. And then you begin making your name for yourself. And that kind of yeah. 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 Well, pretty good, man. And then the, in 82 came, what, the, 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 the plague, right? And then the, the computer the Vivaldi, the fourth season. That's mm -hmm. the Varesa de Banda. How, how is it to work with Varesa de Banda? It's difficult to get into that kind of label, Varesa de Banda? Oh, no, they came to me, actually. Wow. Yeah, I think, I think the way that worked was they needed, for some product that they were producing, they needed uh, some synthesized uh, thunder and lightning. And they came over to my studio and I did that for them. And then they said, well, you know, you should do an electronic record for us, even though they were a, a film label. I mean, that's what they specialized in. But then they, 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 they uh, paid me to, to produce the Four Seasons. Yeah. I, so in kind of soundtrack world, Varesa Ravan is the place to go to. I mean, yeah. there's still a lot of people that buy. Man, and it's too it's too bad that Christian is not here because he knows a lot of Varesa Ravan and he owns a lot of Varesa Ravan. Why is there some great music in some good electronic music, good soundtrack are never released? Why? Why is this? In the 80s, there were a lot of, and Christian will mention a hundred name. What about this was never produced? That was never produced. That was never yeah. produced. Uh, why, why, why some are, are put out and some of them are not? Well, there has to be uh, a, you know, a businessman and it's going to be a small businessman because these, even like, you know, Veres Air Band is not a big institution. Uh, and the company that's re-releasing all of my records now yeah. is just one guy and a couple of assistants. So, um, uh, you know, somebody has to want to take a chance. So it's very subjective. It just depends upon there being somebody that wants to take a chance on doing this. And I don't know. I, I told the guy, <laughs> uh, his name is Ford Thaxton. That's the, got this little uh, soundtracks music. That's this little label that's releasing, re-releasing all of my records. I said, you know, Ford, how are you going to break even on this? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I know what my sales have been, you know, on, like on um, Slide. 
my sales on slider are like about a thousand dollars a year. So uh, uh, I said, "How are you going to? How are you going to break even?" He said, "Don't worry about it." So he's not worried about it. I'm not worried about it. But it, it, it's a, it's a kind of a system that that is not exactly merit. It it just it it requires somebody that's got a little label and is willing to take a chance on your music. So he bought. He bought the rights to put out all the stuff. Yeah, and and then records. that's his business. Whatever he does with that, yeah, whether he breaks records. even or become a millionaire, or he loses all his. Well, I I told him. I said, look at man. For the first couple of years, you don't need to pay me any royalties at all, because I, he's doing them not just with uh, 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 online but he's actually releasing CDs. And of course, it, just making a CD, making 500 copies of a CD is going to cost several thousand dollars. Really? That much? Hmm? That yeah. much? Well, think about it. You got, you got the, the art design. Somebody's got to design the cover. You got the printing of, of, the, of the, 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 the artwork. You've got the... the uh, The mastering has to be done by somebody. A lot of these were originally released as vinyl. So now they have to take the vinyl and make that into a decent digital copy, which requires a lot of work and a lot of time. He's got a guy who's really good at it, but you know, he's got to pay that guy. No, I think it's, it's to, to produce a commercial product, even 500 copies, it's going to cost a minimum of $2,500. So the guy has spent, you know, Uh, thirty thousand, thirty-five, forty thousand dollars on on my music. So I told him, you know, first two or three years, we'll see how the sales go. First two or three years, you got it. I'm not yeah. collecting any royalties, and then when it, when the time comes, uh, then at that time we'll we'll sign a new contract. Yeah, I, 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 how's he doing? First, Seems you know. to be doing extremely well. I noticed that that the. the, the uh, Star Wars album is is for sale in Walmart. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. How many soundtracks have you made? Pardon? How many soundtracks have you made? Oh, soundtracks. Oh, I don't know. I couldn't even say. Because when I was doing that, I would usually have at least one, sometimes two series. And then I would do movies of the week. And then when the, the, the television season was over, which used to be over by April, so between April and September, you were unemployed, then I would do feature films. So I don't know how many I've done. I, 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 I've done 10, um, uh, sound, uh, 10 um, major uh, NBC, CBS, and so forth. Uh, series, 10 series, and I don't know how many movies of the week, and I haven't done a lot of soundtracks uh, for, for features. I've probably done 20 of which, like, probably 17 are, are not worth listening to or watching. <laughs> yeah. Well, I would love to get a hold of everyone and listen to stuff, and some of stuff on, on the next radio that I put together I want to show the music, man. Well, I'll send you some stuff. And uh, that's gotta be great stuff. Man. I what, what? What's the name of who's uh, who's the name of the guy with the record company? The his name is Ford Thaxton, and yeah. um, I'm just afraid to touch the screen. Let me. Yeah, let me... You, you, later on you can send me an email with all the info. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Ford. Yeah. It's uh, sound. It's I think it's called Soundtracks Records. I think T R A X. I'll send you the... Yeah, would be great. Okay. So then you went to from the Vivaldi to uh, what's called Driving Well... Driving Well with Mind. Bernie. Yeah, with Benny Maupin, who one of the great jazz musicians of, in the yeah. country. Yeah, that was a, that's a great album. And so you, you, you went sort of... Wait, as you were doing electronic music soundtrack, you miss jazz. Oh, so you went back to jazz when you yeah. did jazz 
Man, I miss the other stuff, so you need to do a little bit. Well, it's jazz. The stuff I'm doing is is halfway between jazz and electronic music. You know, it's kind of a combination of the two things. Mm. Do, do you know, do you, uh, what electronic music people do you like? Do you know who Tangerine Dream is? Klaus Schulze? <laughs> who? Tangerine Dream? Oh, yeah. In fact, I almost, I almost joined Tangerine Dream. Are you kidding me? No, 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 I'm not. Um, Edgar well, Frost, you know all these people? Huh? Edgar Frost and then Klaus Schulze. Well, that Edgar Frost was the problem. Uh, so, um, oh my God, man. Yeah. So uh, I can't remember the man's name, but but uh, another guy in the in the in the group, one of the original members, did an, uh, worked with me on an album for, for uh, Michael Honig, who was also know who he yeah, uh, wonderful musician. So. So he and I got along really well. So he invited me to join Tangerine Dream. I hadn't decided whether this was going to be a good thing for me to do or not. But what happened was when this guy came back and told Edgar what he had done, Edgar was a control freak and, and yeah. not, not perhaps the nicest person in the world. He, quote, fired the guy, <laughs> the guy that had invited me. And it took him two weeks to, he kind of had to say, okay, I'm sorry I did this and so forth and so on. So that was the end of, of, of uh, to get back into the group, he had to give up on having me in the group. And Edgar told, told him, he said, I would never have anybody in the group that didn't speak German. Now, as it turned out, I, I one time I actually spoke a little German, but I, I mean, it wouldn't have been enough to please Edgar. Well, no, nowadays it's not true because there, I, we interview one guy from, from Tangent Dream and the, the lady who played violin, she's Japanese, so yeah. the rule, what when he passed away kind of changed. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it, man, Michael, what's the what's the name of the famous album for Michael Honing? Oh, Journey from the Northern Waste. Journey from the Northern Waste. Oh man, that one, that that's. Oh, that, thank that, you. That I worked on that album. Yeah. In fact, we finished it. At really? Different yeah, we finished it at different fur. My God, that's a beautiful album, man. Oh yeah, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Very, very well. The the last, I think uh, there. Are oh, and you, in fact, you should, do, you should do. I'm going to write, Michael. You should do, and I'll I'll give you his his information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanna, I wanna. Of course, I wanna interview. You. Let me tell you who's the name of the stuff. Hold on. Uh, the the person who Tangerine Dream, I interview. Give me one minute. Let me check on my computer here. Uh, because the name is always difficult for me to pronounce. Uh, uh, he, we, I interview uh, Torsten Quishing. So I remember said, that Tangerine Dream have changed a lot in the yeah. last. Yeah. Well, sure. Last five years, and now there's four guy Ulrich. The Japanese lady, and then Thorsten, and another person. Yeah. But then they change every three years. They, you know, yeah. one person leave, another enter, and so. On. Yeah. Tangu and Dream have been a hundred different people, right? So. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, oh, definitely, I want to interview him. It, 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 it's it difficult to get a hold of Klaus Schulze. Uh, I don't know. He's a friend of Michael Shreve, who is the drummer in my trio. So I can ask oh him. God. I'll ask him. Let me write that down so I don't forget. Yeah. Uh, so. Definitely Michael, Michael Honey and, and, and then... Um, oh, and Michael Shreve is another guy you should interview. He was the drummer in Santana. Man, yeah, put the name on it. I, I okay, want to sure. talk to everybody. Okay. Do, do you know about... We interview, believe it or not, we begin with my friend Christian. It's too bad that he's not here because he knows a lot of music and um, some Italian progressive band and we end up interviewing people from quite sure you know the name but PFM and then um, the latest one that we did hold on let me let me look at uh, of course, I, I don't know if you if you know of course of course the German guys 
love that. Do you know who the band Popol Boo? I don't. They did a lot of... You know what Bernard Herzog is, right? A German director? Who? Bernard Herzog. Bernard Herzog. I, I, I will send you the link, right? Okay. So several of these folks that were in... in uh, in Popobu, uh, the main person died and they went to another band, kind of electronic called Amol Duel, too. And then he's the guy who knows Klaus Schulz. But Klaus yeah. Schulz, I, 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 I think that. I think Michael Michael Shreve can put you in touch with Klaus. Oh, that would be know. great. I'll, I'll find out. Yeah, and um, oh, and, you know, Klaus Klaus was in the same band that I was in, except not at the same time. Klaus was in Go. You know Go? Of course I know that. Okay, okay. Well, he was in the original Go, and I was in Go, too. My God, man. What a life you have, man. I have been very, very lucky. I'm going to tell you a little story which explains it's not, a lot it's not of Patrick, I, it's, not it's not luck. It's not luck. It's no, no luck. I mean, well, you know what I was well, thinking? When you give up for... You gave up playing music for 15 years. Your 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 teacher, your piano teacher, she's a bad person. Yeah. Because you you didn't do anything for 15 years. And if you have a stuck with that, right? With your jazz and keep on being music, in those 15 years you went to academia that you didn't like it, man. Man, you you could have done you have done well, but you can do have done. I have, I have. But well, look at well, I, I want to tell you this story. So yeah. There, there was a, uh, a young guy I used for uh, television sessions. He was a trumpet player. Very yeah. good. And he was at the time, his, his money gig was he was uh, working for John Williams out at uh, uh, the, the ranch, um, Star Wars ranch. Uh, what is his name? You know, the big... Uh, the big recording facility that's owned by the guy that did Star Wars. I can't think of the name. Anyway, Lucas? he's working with huh? Lucas Ranch. Luke. So he's so he's working for 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 John Williams, and uh, John Williams seems like a very formal and and sort of formidable guy. And actually, he's very kind of funny and friendly. And so my friend is standing listening to playbacks with with Williams. And he says, uh, so um, but that, at the time, my friend had never written a, a soundtrack. So he says to John Williams, he says, um, Johnny, I, I want to ask you a personal question. Can I do that? And Williams <laughs> says, well, it depends on the question. We won't be able to ask. <laughs> so he kind of teased him. So, so my friend says, well, I, I'd like to do what you're doing someday. And, and uh, how how can I do that? So Williams, he's kind of half joking and half serious. He kind of strokes his chin and he says, well, he says, you know, the first thing is you need to have a few good breaks. And he stops and he says, about 30 of them. <laughs> <laughs> 30 breaks. Right? And so what, what's, what's happened to me and to my friend, who, by the way, now has two Emmys, uh, yeah, um, is that you need, you know, a lot of good breaks. And another thing you need, which I've been very, very fortunate, is you need some amazing mentors, people that know so much more than you know and that are willing to share it with you. And I've had uh, Gil Evans. Gil Evans, I met him almost just by accident in, in New York, and he became a mentor. I mean, he went to, to, to Herbie's... Uh, gigs at the um, um, Village Vanguard and he recorded what we had done there and then he'd have me over to his house the next day and we'd listen to the soundtracks together I mean to the, to the cassettes together and he'd stop the cassette and he said oh, what's going on there I mean he just you know, he just took me under his wing I've had so I've had uh, you know as a mentor I've had Herbie Hancock I've had Gil Evans. I mean, if you can't make it after having those guys as mentors, <laughs> you know what to make. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I've just been very lucky. Um, 
I've had the good breaks. I was in San Francisco, which was a, uh, a really hotbed of, of the, new, the new music, the music of the 60s. So I was there for that, which got me in with, you know, a lot of famous rock groups and so forth. It wasn't rock, wasn't what I wanted to do with my life, but it was useful and I made a little money and I learned something. So I, I've, I've just been very lucky. I, I, would, I would have to maintain that a lot of it is lucky. If you don't have the luck, if you're not lucky, it doesn't really matter how good you are. Mm. Because if God exists, then why some people would be luckier than others? Yeah. Or have more breaks than others? Well, of course, you know, you got to put yourself out there. Well, you need to be good, obviously, right? To make you need money. to be good, and you need yeah. to put yourself out there. I've known, I have a friend, uh, he's gone now, who's probably one of the most amazing writers, uh, composers, arrangers uh, of, the, of the 20th century. He only did one movie. Oh, we're going to end here. Okay. If there's a 10 minute, oh yeah. man. So, so we better wrap it up. But anyway, so anyway, what I was going to say is that, uh, but he was, he was a guy who was very introverted, very anxious. Well, if you go into the, the Hollywood film community and you're introverted, don't make friends easily and you're anxious, it really doesn't matter how good you are. Yeah. So <laughs> that's the deal. Well, this has been fun. Man, it, it, it's, it's possible if you have the time to do like so many questions I want to ask you, do like a sure, part two course, and a part three. And yeah, we'll have Charmaine set up the meeting. Yeah. Because okay. there's so many. But in the meantime, uh, Patrick, if you can set me up with those people. I will. Be and, then, uh, and then um, the um, send me an email with the people that is selling your music because definitely I want to get to we'll that too. Yeah. And then do you, two, two last questions. Do you, do you are in touch with the Varese Salavan folks mm -hmm. that got the management? I, I don't even know. I haven't talked to them in 25 year. years. Yeah. Right. And then, yeah, Wendy Carlos, my mission. Will you send me an email? And they Good luck with that. Good luck. Uh, I will, but you know, send me an email how to get a hold of her. No on this recording, obviously, but I will. I, 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 it's going to be my life mission. I, I need to, you know. Yeah, I, I you know, as I've told you, I, I, I think she's just retreated from the world. But you know, who knows? You may be the yeah, guy. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an outside person, right? Yeah. I mean, good. I want to do an interview. I want to show her music. I, I think I'm doing the right thing, right? So you are. Maybe, yeah, maybe we'll say, I don't care what the reason you gave me. <laughs> no, it's not, right? Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. And yeah. I'll, you know, let, let's have another talk. Uh, and I'll, meanwhile, I'll send you uh, these names and yeah, uh, yeah. email addresses. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, Thank you, man. It's, it's been, been excellent. And, you know, you are humble. And, man, I didn't know that you were. You are a very famous guy. I know you were famous, but, uh, <laughs> but I, I, there is a lot more to the story no, that, that I was able to grab from the internet and source and stuff. Yeah. It was a real pleasure. Uh, Me too. Particularly. Right. And, and good luck with these stations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will. Yeah, I will send you a link with the. I don't know if I send you a link with the where I have all the.